and welcome to another edition of Seekers of the Supernatural. You are now standing in one of the most haunted houses in the world. Someday we will run out of haunted items at the Warren Occult Museum. However, today is not that day, so cursed object enthusiasts rejoice. While it might not be quite at the level of the Smithsonian, the Warren Occult Museum was once jam packed with curios, knickknacks, and ornaments galore. Some even larger than the words I just described. Now, it's very difficult to ascertain the actual hauntedness of a lot of these, and their origins might be a little foggy, but hey, what can you do, right? So, today we're going to count down the top five most haunted items at the Warren Occult Museum, part four. Let's get to it. Coming in at number five, we've got a mask of Hannah Crana. This item isn't necessarily intrinsically linked to the famous witch, but it is done up in her likeness and inspires folks to learn more about her magical ways. And that is impressive, so we'll talk about it. Way back when, in the far off land of New England, there once lived a woman known as Hannah Crana. She was an individual with a particularly short temper and a tendency to demand things of her neighbors with nothing offered in return. Come on, Hannah. Now, oftentimes her neighbors would say no to these demands, resulting in a bit of a tantrum from Miss Crana. These could be scary and upsetting, but nothing too terrible, or so they thought. Often, after refusing Hannah Crana a favor, these neighbors would have some misfortune befall them. And because of the rumors circulating, they didn't usually chalk this up to simple bad luck. No sir, they suspected witchcraft. The idea compounded over time, especially as things seemed to get worse around Hannah. Her husband wandered off into the night and perished after falling off a cliff. This put even heavier suspicion upon Hannah, who at this point was deemed a witch by all of her neighbors. And Hannah Crana embraced this title with aplomb. Good for her, right? She took to walking around with her rooster, Old Boreas, who many suspected to be her familiar. She cursed her baker neighbor to bake less tasty pies, and cursed a young fisherman to never catch a fish again. And eventually she foresaw her own death and made some more of her famous demands in relation to her burial. Her neighbors were told to carry her coffin to her grave by hand, not by cart. She also refused to be buried before sundown. Of course, when she kicked the bucket, they didn't want to deal with all this. But when they attempted to drag her coffin through the snow by sled, it would slide off and down the hill, forcing them to try again. And to top it all off, when they returned to Hannah Crana's home at the end of the ordeal, it had burned to the ground. A witch through and through. So be careful while looking at this mask. Who knows if somehow Hannah Crana could still be channeling power through it. Coming in number four, we've got some satanic books. We've talked quite a bit about the allure and taboo that comes along with satanic rituals. When people find masks, dolls, tombstones, idols, and more associated with satanism, they tend to get pretty freaked out. They tell tales about what these objects may have been used for in the past and generally attribute a whole lot of dark energy to them. Whether anyone doing this understands exactly what they're talking about is totally up in the air. It seems that every few decades or so there's a brand new satanic panic. X is leading to Y and it's going to corrupt our children. Why won't we think of the children? However, if folks took the time to attempt to understand what they were really talking about, I would bet that the panic might recede a little bit. The frantic reactions of the ill-informed will never stop, will they? On the many shelves of the Warren Occult Museum sit volumes and volumes of satanic books. These could be read by those afraid of what rituals might be impacting people around them, or they could sit there and look scary. If you're afraid of something, it is likely that you just don't understand it. Demystifying ideas and people and creatures is often a good way to really get to the core of what makes them scary, and then you can see them for what they really are. People would probably claim that all these satanic books at the museum are haunted or cursed or have a history of being used in evil rituals, but would never themselves read one to find out exactly what the contents entail. Maybe that saves them from being haunted, but also it could cause them to live in ignorance longer, using fear as an excuse to make broad assumptions and statements. I know this isn't a fantastic analysis of the actual books found at the Warren Occult Museum, but I feel like when discussing things like this, it can be helpful to encourage curiosity over fear. Who knows? Maybe you'll learn something useful. Hopefully without having to resort to rituals and sacrifices. Coming in number three, we've got some samurai armor. I'll be honest right off the bat here. This armor, as creepy and cool as it is, doesn't actually exist. Like it's showcased briefly in the Conjuring Cinematic Universe, but we don't learn all that much about it. The reason for the lack of apparent backstory is simple. They made it up for the movie. Bit of a letdown, I know. But for it to have screen time, that must mean that there is a wicked tale to be told about this battle-hardened human protector. It may have belonged to a famously brutal warrior, one who took the heads of all his victims on the battlefield. Their poor, unfortunate souls doomed to reside within the carapace until the end of time. Maybe the bloodthirsty soul of the samurai himself still resides in the armor. 
Perhaps the suit has a different story altogether, free from battlefield use. What do you think the story is behind this fictional item? Coming in number two, we've got some glass eyeballs. They see you. In general, old school prosthetics fall under the Uncanny Valley classification. The folks making them didn't have the technology or experience to make them truly comfortable or convincing, so we often ended up with weird facsimiles of human body parts that are quite unsettling to look at. To be honest, I think the pirates had it right. Forget fake parts, let's just use peg legs and eye patches. Of course, that's not exactly the most dignified way to live one's life, and not everyone wants to look like a pirate with a hook for a hand. So even before we had high quality prosthetics for general use, folks did their best to make replacement parts. And so we ended up with stuff like this. Two foggy glass eyeballs inside of what appears to be an Altoids tin ready to peer into your soul at a moment's notice. That's a grim image. And apparently, these eyeballs are haunted. I'm not entirely sure what that means, but it must be blood curdling. Maybe they float around at night, suspended in the air, implying a face that nobody can see. Or maybe a ghost without eyes pops them in from time to time, completing a face that went to the grave missing a couple of ocular grapes. No matter how you slice this, you've got a pair of roly-poly disembodied eyeballs that cannot and will not blink. Things they must have seen. And finally, at number one, we've got a dark magic doll. Unsurprisingly, the Warrens had a massive collection of scary dolls. Annabelle and the Shadow Doll are just the beginning, and are likely so well known compared to the others thanks to their relative power. These two will act on their own, and often cause mischief and misfortune without being prompted. The Dark Magic Doll is a little different, where it's still imbued with a curse, but has to be used by a human to take effect. According to Tony Spera, son-in-law of the Warrens, it operates kind of like a voodoo doll. By adding an image of the person you're attempting to harm to it, you can use it to cause plenty of pain in their life. Make the doll look like your target, perform a quick ritual and maybe add some of their hair to the equation and you're set. Then you hang the doll and wait for it to take effect. Apparently those who are targeted by the effects of this magic doll will soon fall ill and eventually succumb to this illness. So don't be messing around with it for no reason, you've got to go in with intent and just for funsies, please let us know if that's something you plan on doing in the future. You know, just you know, so we know. We're not worried or anything, no way. Damn, dude! Soon we'll have this whole museum cataloged. Then what'll happen? I guess you guys will have to donate some additional cursed and haunted items to keep things moving along. So, what'd you think of the list? Do you agree with my picks? Which haunted item remains in your head at all times? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more nebulous ones from the Worst Angels in the Bible Marathon. Crystal Brooks says, I think the trumpet angels would scare me the most. Are you not a fan of jazz? Ka Stewie says, how many times has Lucifer topped the list? It's over 9,000! What, 9,000? Alpha Houston says, so basically we got a couple legendary Pokemon living in the sun. Hmm, I guess I need some Master Balls now. Where are you finding more than one Master Ball? Vexing Topaz says, when they gloss over all these angels in Bible study. I think they wanted you to come away with more lessons like, love thy neighbor, less about the horrifying power of the divine. And Ross Buzzle says, I'm enjoying the video. Leviathan, however, is not an angel, but a multi-headed sea monster that was slain by God. There are some sources that state he did so because the beast would have destroyed all his creation. In Job 41, there are 34 verses dedicated to describing the sea monstrosity and in Psalm 74:14, it stated that God crushed the heads of Leviathan and gave it as good to the creatures of the desert. What a top-notch fact check. Take notes, everyone else. And that's all the time we have for today. I'm going to ride my bike with no hands. No legs either. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs> ah, it's my chains, my chains thinner and shorter than yours, Chris. It's okay. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. Five most haunted I Oof. Coming in at number five, we've got the mask. Coming in a really little temper and a tendency to She was an individual thinks of her neighbors with a little Why? We've all quite We've talked quite a curiosity over fear. <laughs> 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 Clear up there? <laughs> Probably. Okay. Make the doll look like your target, perform a quick Make the doll look like your target, perform a quick ritual, maybe add some of the This list is killing me. Make the doll look like